Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4, and today we're looking at Dwarf 7's new big box expansion, The Lost Tribes. This is a bit of a Kickstarter where it puts a lot of Dwarf 7 winter in your face before getting to the Kickstarter special, but hey, everything's looking cool here, and we'll let Lipstick Patty tell you all about it straight after this quick advert. If you like video games, you might be interested in our sister channel, which is PC Gamer Radio, where our host Lipstick Patty is also covering video games on the PC. E3 is soon be here, and he's doing predictions every day of this week. He's also looked at some stellar PC games that you may have gone under your radar. So Blitz description will be above to check out this channel, and also in the description below. As some of these games you might be absolutely in love with when you play them. So please check it out, just for a favor for a host, Lipstick Patty. Thanks for listening. Well, here's Dwarf 7 Winter, a previous Kickstarter, with its new expansion, The Lost Tribes. Ooh. Now, if you don't know Dwarf 7's Winter, it's really a Euro game. It calls itself Tower Defense, but you're not putting any towers down. You're just basically defending a castle and going out getting resources on the map. And um, killing monsters and taking out disasters that are happening. But... Really, the monsters aren't attacking you unless they get to the castle. And <clears throat> the monsters just felt like a... May as well just been a disaster that you've got to put. Put people on there and pay a resource to claim it. So, yeah. So, I, the, I would have preferred it if, if you were fighting the monsters, some dice were rolled or something like that. But it, it felt very Euro gamey when I um, played it so but I enjoyed it all the same it is tactical and all that stuff I weren't a big fan on the art I thought it was a little bit drub and could have been more vibrant and I thought it's winter why not some Christmas trees Christmas lights and all that stuff and some people ice skating and stuff like that but the board is far too simple for me almost like a phone app this is what the art looks like to me <clears throat> but anyway you got a swath of minis to the the original and um, here we are with Kickstarter exclusive edition now. <clears throat> now it's not too bad to get both games for a hundred because there is a lot here and the minis are pretty good standard. Um, each player gets their own set of dwarfs that they're going to be putting out as people on the board. <clears throat> you basically put them out trees for wood, you get food from the farms and you get iron from the mines, but everything looks kind of too similar for me, and I wish they'd read on the board, because this could have been a 1.5, you see, for Dwarf 7. It's been maybe three, I want to say three years <clears throat> from Vesuvius Media. The fact they just stick stuck to their main board is a real pet peeve of mine, because they could have done that. Could have changed the board, but uh, anyhow... Like you've seen these monsters on the board, but it's literally get your miners in there and spend resources to defeat the monster. There's no dice rolling. And in, in some ways, it almost feels like you're card crafting because it's like get so many dwarfs that pay resource, get the card. So it's you're a game where you're moving around the map and card crafting. It's seen as semi co op because the disasters and these monsters, if they get to the middle, game over right so <clears throat> but you are getting stuff for your own self though to win because you're getting points and stuff so mm. but it is a simple game easy to learn has some deeper strategy with it though and it is quite nice you can see that these boards here these images here they are there's a little bit of vibrancy to them wish the board had that and um, this green-eyed girl, why she got olive skin? <laughs> it's like these weird things for the art. And it's it could be hit or miss with you, but it's generally charming. I, I like the colour on the characters that they're doing. And the fact that your dwarfs, this shanty concept where the music can give them special abilities. That's really nice. The resource management board where stuff's happening is kind of nice and clear as well. It does have this 
I like phone app to the art though, and it really grains me, the art. And I wish it had done a pass. Just get a new artist on the game and give it another pass. It looks like in the video game industry, it looks like a game from the noughties and we're in the 2020s now. Dear me, why have they not updated it? Oh, it's just resin, resin, resin. Cap. Co-op tower defense. You're not putting towers down. It's not a tower defense. I don't know. I don't know how it's got away. We're calling it a tower defense game. It's basically a Euro game. It's a Euro game. This is what it is. But it's actually a cool Euro game. <laughs> fighting says fighting, but it's actually just getting dwarfs and spending resources, which is exactly what you're doing when you're dealing with the disasters. So. Mm. However, your dwarfs are all asynchronous. Look, in art style, there's no carbon copy here, so that's a plus. You've got all these monster minis, that's definitely a plus. The art on the cards themselves is vibrant, yes. I would have liked, though, the background to be a bit in the theme instead of all this easy backgrounds that they've put on this. That grains me a little bit. Monster cards are nice, they've all got different abilities about what they're doing on the board and they all come with victory points if you get them and the disasters, very much the same. The disasters though, they're taking more resources than the monsters to take though and they're taking less dwarfs. So it's like the, the disasters are level one enemies and then the monster cards are your level two and three difficulty that you're going for. Even though the victory points on the disasters is quite high, actually. <sighs> the game board from years ago, not been updated. Bugbear, my bugbear. I like that they've put a selection of heroes out here. They've not got them all. I don't know why they did put them all. But this, these monsters, are these monsters? These heroes are the ones that you're going to be having in your hand because it has a little bit of a deck builder where you, you're getting a selection of cards per round and you're selecting from them to play. So you'll like pull all the drums out and hope someone puts the drum musical instrument down so you can activate their abilities. There's If you take out monsters though, you do get currency that's the big difference disasters also giving you currency no no is it it's disasters that give you currency monsters don't give you them and the you can basically buy new heroes to put into your deck so your deck building by spending in the shop everything else i'm kind of happy with it's just the board that really bugs me out because the reason I call it like phone art as well is that all the forests are copy paste trees. All the mines look devoid of actual being like mines with actual work gear in there. And uh, yeah, I, it just looks tired art. Oh, that's what it looks like. Now, the Lost Tribe expansion, this is what we're here for then, if you've got the original or retail, and you're getting some ogres. The ogres are coming. Crystal dwarfs are coming. Half bloods are coming. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? We're getting new, new, just new stuff adding to it. Seven ogre minis. It says asymmetric tribes. Is the difference between those ogres? I don't know. It's easy to see the dwarf minis are all different and the half bloods can't really see that. Or maybe it's work in progress, the asynchronous ones. It's legendary class miniatures. Ooh. Now this is interesting that you are getting legendary classes because um, you know, if this is in the shop, it's gonna be like super equipment when it comes out. <clears throat> Adding towers? 
What's this? Well, it's not tower per se. It probably gives you greater resources and you can build your, um, walls around the center. So it has a little bit more HP. Hmm. Oh, and it's got a nice little board as well, which is, seems fun as well. Oh, this is looking very nice. Now, even though the R is my biggest bugbear, everything's looking cool here, and the expansion looks really good, actually. Let's have a look down at the stretch goals. Oh, what? Baby dragons. <laughs> now, out of the people here at Kickstarter Radio 1 or 2.4, I'm the only one that doesn't like the art. So, that's just for me. It's the board art. Just the board art. Everyone else thinks it is good, but when I... Pl I'm the only one here at the station that's played it, and I do really enjoy it. But I wouldn't have it in my collection, but... My collection... The Euros that I get in my collection, I like them a little bit crunchy, and I like them to be a little bit... You know, with a different theme and that. This is themed, the kind of... Dwarfs running around and stuff, but it's not... An itch I want for my Euros. However, it, what it's doing here looks good. If you like this, like um, this mobile phone art, which the card's looking great, yes, and you're interested in a Euro game with this interesting mechanic, mm, maybe it's for you. Definitely has a lot of love out there. And I'm sure this expansion comes very much. <coughs> Get through all there's a lot in there. I guess it, it, it comes very much appreciated that this expansion's come out. The all in bundle. Oh no, the legendary expansions on top of the Lost Tribes expansion. That means. I've got to up my pledge. <laughs> okay. It's not even mentioned these deluxe tokens. Or did, it, did I fly right past that? Now, you're going to have to tell me here because the combo's 100. Um, the, the Dwarf Seven Winter's only 45. That's super cheap, isn't it? And the Lost Tribes expansion at 60. This is like a massive big box expansion, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Yes. And especially when you can get the other box with the legendary expansion and stuff. So yeah, it's becoming like a... Fin it looks like it's getting fantastically support here, isn't it? But as much as I say about the board art... I can get over it because there's a lot of stuff happening on the board. Lots of things go out there. And if you paint your minis, it will look phenomenal. The D7 Winter Deluxe Tokens. Why wouldn't you have them? Ooh. Family Game Mod is a full co-op experience. That sounds fun. I'll definitely be interested in that. And this is fantastic where they've got um, fan support of people painting these minis. <laughs> the cactus looks funny. Um, so yeah, it is a collection of dwarf stuff. And um, the Lost Tribes expansion coming in 2022. Um... Yeah, it's, there's like a little bit of a line over this. The Dwarf 7, the 2018, so it's four, four years ago. And um, so yeah, if you want the last Lost Tribes expansion, so if the legendary expansion is the old one from the original Kickstarter, then you want the big box here. Um, that's what you want to go for. So yeah, it's looking very, very cool. Oh, we've 
got Mexico here, 35. <laughs> I like to see Mexico pointed out on the little things, and that's nice to see. All right, Vesuvius, you've done a great job here with this big box expansion. You've sat on your laurels and not updated the board, but hey, it will be full of dwarfs and monsters going out there, so it does sound... Uh, I wouldn't be too bothered by that. It, I think when I played it, I said I don't like the board, and then the mum has got playing with it. I lost that problem because I was deep into its game systems. I love the deck building. I love the shop that comes out. I like the monsters when they come out. I love dealing with them. Definitely feels like a Euro, though. From the first turn, it's a Euro game with this... Mm, it's more territorial control aspect. Um... And all that good stuff but I highly recommend it if you're into a euro with a really unique style and lots of minis going on the map there we go so yeah I do if you're into your euros this is definitely going to be your cup of tea if the theme is something you're interested in um, yeah going towards a thousand backers getting towards 100k it's looking good for the campaign I do wish it luck, and we do recommend it here, we really do. I think this new big box expansion is adding a lot to the table here. And um, and yeah, so let me know in the comments what you think of Dwarf 7's big box expansion. Isn't it looking really good? Have you got the original game? What do you think of that? Let, let our um, viewers know exactly what you think of it, and how are you excited for this new expansion? Well, you can go all in here, get everything from the first Kickstarter and the big box. That's looking like a good time if you've um, missed it. There's some good videos down here that you can check out too. Um, give a shout out to Dice Odyssey. Kaz there did a great job reviewing the original. And um, and yeah, so yeah, I'll put, his, I'll put a link down in the description for him. For that one it is in the main page here but i'll put it in the description just because of the extra support gone his way so there you go well thank you so much for watching i've been your host lipstick patty you've been listening to kickstarter radio 1 and 2.4 you take care stay safe and bye bye for now